Hello everybody, hope you're all well. And today I'm gonna to show you how I tie a solid bag. We all know how to tie a solid bag, but there's a few mistakes that people make, which means when they cast, the bags do not fly true. They wobble in the air, they don't reach the clip, you've got a reel in, you've got a tie a new bag, and it's only some small mistakes really. So let me show you how I tie a bag and hopefully it's gonna help you out. The first thing that we have to consider with a bag is leads. Now, most people that tie a bag, not most, but a lot of people that tie a bag will use that. Now that is a flat pair with a tail rubber on it. And this tail rubber is the short ones that go on the back of lead clips and they do work. Don't get me wrong, they do work. But would that be my first choice? For me, no. Um, okay, at short range, but if I want a bag to fly properly, there's, I need a longer stem on the back. So what I used to do was have these. And you can see there, that's got a much longer stem. And those longer stems really help in stopping wobble in the cast. It acts as like a bit of a flight. And this is made out of a plastic tube that I sourced that will fit directly over the insert that goes through the lead. Now, it's a little bit of hassle trying to find the tube that will fit that. And one thing that we all don't want in life is hassle. So there's an easy solution to this now. And that is these. And I've been using these a fair time now. Solid bag towel rubbers. They fit perfectly on the back of the bag and they, on the back of the lead, and they do exactly what I need them to do. They stabilize the bag in flight. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a Guru hybrid feeder. Well, a Guru hybrid feeder are often used by match anglers and they can be used to fish at islands at 30 yards or they can be used to fish 130 yards. And the further they cast, the longer tail they have on the back of the feeder. Well, a solid bag is exactly the same. So I went from that, which is a bit of tubing that I put on there myself. And now we've got that, which, is, which produces a similar result. That just pushes on the back like that, on there like that. And that now is my preferred setup. The lead size is three and a half ounces, which is important. I like a three and a half ounce lead because with the size of bags I use, when I add the pellet and the liquid, the bag weighs about four and three quarter to five ounces, and that casts really well. So in my opinion, when you're tying a bag, this is vital. The flat pair is very popular, and I've got loads of these. I do use them a lot, but when I'm going for my biggest casts, I prefer this setup right here. And that, if you can see, that is a square pair, and that's in three and a half ounces. Set up exactly the same, You've got that tail rubber pushed on the back here, like that. And you can put mono through here, straight through. But what I've got here is a little bit of lead core with a loop on it. So I can change bags quickly, pre-tied bags. And 
that's pushed through the center of the lead. But also, if you want the lead to come off on the take, you can put the lead core around the lead and then push the swivel in the front there. So when you get a bite, the swivel comes out, the tail rubber falls off and the lead falls off. Depends, it depends where you're fishing and if it's weedy or not. Um, but that's how this one's set up. I don't really want to go into rigs too much because everybody's got their favorite rigs. Um, what I use is really simple, but I'm just going to go through it really quickly. Um, that's if I don't tangle it up. What we've got here, I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see it. What we've got here is a hook link about four inches. Nice and short, that's really important. And we've got a size six wide gape that's been put on there multi-rig style. And I like the multi-rig style because after I've caught a fish, I can change the hook. So multi-rig style, a little kicker, just to kick it out like that. As you can see, I'm trying to get it for you. Kick it out like that and a little rig ring, swivel rig ring on the bottom there. The most important thing probably about that is the short hook link and the small bait. To tie a bag, to tie a bag that's tight and flies well, you're often using small pellet, which means for me, a small hook bait. You don't want a big, obvious standout hook bait. But we've all got our favorite rigs. I'm sure you guys have got your favorite rig. I'm just showing what I do. So that's the lead system, all there, all ready to go into a bag. Let's have a look at the bags that I use and the size of the bag, which is really important. And there's two bags that I use actually. This one here, that's the extra small ones from Corda. Them ones fly really well, um, very compact, small. And the smaller bags, they won't wobble as much because the weight the weight's often down the bottom more with the lead and through the air, they're gonna cut through the air really well so the small bags fly really well. I sometimes use them in small as well. That's if I want to introduce more bait. But really the purpose of a solid bag is you get a little mouthful, the fish comes down, sucks the lot in and it hooks itself. Well, that's what we hope anyway. I don't really need no loads of bait there. I just want a mouthful. So that's the bag. Um, if I get one of these bags, I'll show you how I tie, I tie the bag. And tying a solid bag for the camera is always gonna be awkward, but let's hope it goes right. So the first thing I do is I open the bag up. You can blow into it to do that. That's opened up. Now, putting the rig in, you get some people that put the lead in first and they put the bait up there. You get other people that put the lead one side and they put the bait the other side. For me, what I like to do, I don't think it matters that much to be honest with you. I think as long as the fish can get to it and when they suck in this mouthful, the bait goes in, it's gonna hook them. So for me, I like to put the bait in first. So let's drop this bait in and we want it to the bottom of the bag and we, know we want it to lay nice and flat, which there. And what I'm gonna do then, I'm actually going to push the lead into the bag. So I've got the lead into the bag I'm just gonna move that round so that's nice and flat on the bottom of the bag. And that's perfect, that's perfect. So I've got the, the bait in the bottom, the hook's in the bottom, and now I need to add some pellet or bait that I'm gonna use. 
Again, there's so many pellets out there, there's so many baits, I'm not gonna tell you what to use. I'm just gonna tell you what I use. And I use my friends from Munch Baits. This is, as you can see on here, this is micro salmon pellet. It's just a little bit bigger than salmon fried crumb pellet. It's very small, very smelly actually. But that's the important thing, it's very small. We do not want loads of air gaps um, in the bag. We want everything tight and compact. So for me, that's perfect. So I'm gonna fill this bag up with some pellet. And that's just covering that bag, just covering the bait at the bottom of the bag. And now I'm gonna rest my lead on top of it. So what you've got there, let's have a look. What you've got there without moving the lead is the bait at the bottom, and then you've got the pellet on top of the hook link. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit more And then you can actually use the lead to push the pellet down. You need a good cover in there because, you, because the last thing you wanna do is blunt the hook with your lead. So there's a good cover in there at the bottom, like the lead's dropped in and that is perfect. Now why I like these square leads is because the weights, the weights ditch, distributed throughout the bag properly, and it's spread. So there's no flat lead, it's all spread, nice in a circle around the bag. And I'm gonna add some more pellet without spilling it everywhere. There. And what's important now is, is that the pellet goes round the bag. Now that's sitting right in the middle and the pellet has gone round the bag. You do not want the lead resting up against the bag because that means the weight is more in one side of the bag. You want this lead to be dead centre and that's really good. I'm happy with that, that's really good. So from there, we're going to tap this down a bit. Just hit it, make sure everything's tight. That's good. So let's just put a bit more pellet in there. It's getting to be about perfect now. Now that is about right. Okay, let's get this pellet out of the way. Now that's about right. You can see in the bag, it's probably about two thirds full and I don't want this pellet up too high in the bag because I want the weight more down the front. If you fill this bag right up, when you cast, that's gonna wobble. We don't want that wobble. We want the lead situated about halfway down the bag. You want it about halfway down to even a little bit erring towards the front. Also, we've got to leave some stem there so that we can wrap the bag around there so the stem can do its job, which is stabilize the bag in flight. Now, it's all nice and tight already. This, this small pellet just compacts really well. But what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna turn that like that, okay? Now, if you see that, that's quite a hard bag already, but I'm gonna push that down, manipulate it, mold it into shape, get everything tight. And I wrapped this round a few times. That's all good. It's getting really hard now. Like that. That's perfect. Nice and tight. So one more time. Let's wrap that round like that. That's great. And this is something else that you can do as well. You can get that, you can actually suck the air out of these bags by, if you get that, 
light and suck in. And twist it at the same time and that gets even tighter. And that is a really tight bag. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So from there, we've got to get our PVA tape. My PVA tape is a bit of a mess. I've broke the spool a few times, but it is tape. And what we're going to do is get a long length. Don't cut yourself too short with it because it makes it awkward. Longish length. And we're going to wrap this around the bag five or six times. But as we wrap it round, I'm tapering it towards the bag. So this becomes tighter and tighter and tighter. And that's really good. That's tight. And now the hardest bit, a granny knot, half hitch type thing there, bang. And we've tightened that up. I've done it there once. I'm going to give myself a bit more tape. I'm going to do it again. And me being me, I just do this. I'm going to do it again. Now, after you've, after you've done that, you can just pull that and snap that or hold it and snap it. But sometimes it ruins the bag. So I'm going to do it all nice and neat. And we're going to trim this off. I'm going to trim these loose, loose bits off here. Be careful not to damage your bag. So like that. It's perfect. Then we're going to get this bit, the loose bits at the end here. Bring all that down. We're going to trim this up. See all that loose stuff there? We're going to trim that up. There. Loose stuff there. So we've got a nice tidy bag. From there, any any bit sticking out, let's lick it, stick it down. That's nearly done now. So that's nice and tight already. But you've all seen this, I'm sure, with other solid bag videos. We need to push the sides in. Let's push these sides in, pull it out, pull that out, any loose stuff, get that in tight. So we've got them two bits there and we've got to lick them down. So you can mold it to so whatever shape you want, really. Just mold it down so it's nice and tight. And that is the finished bag. Now, on Trishans last week, when I was showing people these bags, how to tie them up and how to cast them, I had cast uh, 216 yards with these bags. So if you get it right, these really fly. Some people like adding liquids as well. And that's fine, you can add liquids. In fact, liquids are a good thing if you put them in there right. You do not want the liquid up the top of the bag. We're trying to get all the weight down the front of the bag. So when you inject the liquid, inject it down into the bottom, that will add more weight. So when it flies, it'll be front heavy, and that's what you want. I've actually got some liquid here. Um, my friends from Munch Baits are giving me this prototype liquid. I'm going to be trying that soon. I've got it in the syringe and I'm going to inject it into the bottom of the bag. Exactly where I want it. And it's going in, it's going in nicely. Don't want to drip that over the table. My missus won't be happy. I'm going to inject it through the bottom on this side as well. There it goes on the table. Oop, I'm in trouble. 
and you will see that that is a perfect bag to cast. See that? See all the liquid down the front of the bag, the bottom of the bag? That to me is perfect. That's what I would use. So if you think about a spawn, before we cast the spawn, we get the spawn, we shake it, we get all the weight down the front. That's so it flies properly. If you've got a spawn and you don't shake it and all the weight spread out or over the whole spawn, it doesn't fly as well. So that's my solid bag. That's what I advise you guys to do. I really hope that's helped you. I'm sure it will. I'm sure if you tie up a bag like that, you'll be hitting those spots in no time. Another thing that I'd like to say to you guys, I hope you all have a really good Christmas. It's been a hard few years with all this COVID stuff going on. So have a good one and I'll catch up with you again soon.